I'm smiling because I'm a middle-aged man and I've got wood. And no, my name's not Pele. And no, I haven't been taking little blue tablets either. I've got wood on my Crossman 1077. Watch on. This is the Crossman 1077. It's a 177 pellet shooting, CO2 powered, semi-automatic or self-indexing. You can row about that in the comments section below. Air rifle. Mine is the wood version, but it also comes in a synthetic version. Well, let's be honest, it comes in a plastic stock. But as I've said, mine is the wood. I spent the extra 50 pounds for the wood. For the wood. 50 pounds. Starting at the front, you've got a fixed fiber glow sight. Working your way down, you've got an open sight here, which can be adjusted for a little bit of windage and elevation, providing you've got a screwdriver. Then you've got a dove rail at the back, I think that's around 11 mils, and then you carry on down this stock and you've got a plastic shoulder pad at the back. This lever here is a barrel latch. And it means that if you get a pellet jammed between the magazine and the barrel, you can get it out. I'm being bitten somewhere. Oh, I'm being bitten. As I said, it's powered by a single 12 gram CO2 capsule. And all you need to do is unscrew the plug off the end at the front there and drop in your 12 gram CO2 capsule. Neck first, in it goes. And then you simply screw that back on. You keep going, you will hear a little hiss of happiness, or maybe not, but when you've got to a point where it really won't go any further, you know you're charged. To put pellets in the rifle, you remove the fake magazine on the bottom. You pinch there and out it comes. You're then going to go ahead and remove the rotating magazine there and put your pellets in. Then you're going to drop it all back together and then you're going to push the magazine back in, just like that. The trigger housing is plastic, the trigger is plastic, and on the side you've got a manual safety, which is resettable at any point when you're shooting. It's very pointable, nice and lightweight, and those fibre sights really work. I think it could also be ideal for a junior, or a big kid like me. Oh yeah! Even though this isn't the most powerful rifle in the world, I always encourage you to check your backstop. Even though I've got hundreds of yards of field to play with down there, I don't want to be sending 177 pellets in all directions. So, always check your backstop and do the best you can to ensure pellets don't go where they shouldn't do. Of course, it always soon descends into how quick can you actually knock the targets down. Oh, look at that! In answer to a question a lot of you are going to ask, is it a hunting rifle? The answer is no. You might pick a rat off at say 10 yards with the open sights if you're lucky but anything after that is a no-no so I don't know why you're walking up and down the field like an idiot pretending it's a hunting rifle because it's not so go away for those of you that always compare everything I ever show you to your Varark 100 and it is a nice gun by the way I've got to ask the obvious question how accurate is the Crossman 1077? As you can see, the Crossman will indeed group. At 15 yards from that 12-shot rotary magazine, I'm getting five or six under my thumb, which is pretty good. You've got to pick the right pellet, though. JSB 8.4s. I've tried quite a few of the other ones, and they're the ones that seem to work best. It's true, this isn't going to win you any accuracy competitions, but I don't think that's what this is all about. This is all about having a lot of backyard fun. This is a brilliant example of why you should always match the right pellet to your rifle. These are Superdomes. 
The Crossman 1077 clearly doesn't like super domes. As I've just told you, it likes the JSB 8.44s. If you persist with using the wrong pallet in your rifle, it could make you incredibly cross. Mun. Crossman. You see what I'm doing there. Now, if you do spend a little bit more money on your 1077 and put a sight on the top, you can tighten up those groups even more. Now we need to talk about that trigger. You see, every time I pull it, it puts up as much fight as me when my wife says, can we watch Dirty Dancing for the thousandth time? This baby has just got no adjustment to it. It's kind of a shame. The rifle is weighted and sized ideal for a junior, but that trigger, it's gonna be hard work for little hands. If you're firing the gun without the magazine in, and hence no pellets in the rifle, say you're wanting to clear the remains of the CO2 in the cylinder, be careful. Don't put your hand there when you do that, because if you do, you might get a little bit of a surprise. This rifle is ideal for popping off a few toy soldiers in the back garden. Power-wise, you've got to remember that the rifle is CO2 powered, so it will always start high and gradually work its way down. At the top of the charge, I'm above 500 feet per second. But by the time I get to the bottom of the capsule, I'm down to around 200. And you have to remember that that will affect your point of aim by a few centimeters from the top to the bottom of the charge. I bought my Crossman 1077 from Braces of Bristol. If you want to get your hands on one, I suggest checking out airgun101.com and there's loads of links on there for people that have these available. And my final thoughts, it's a CO2 backyard blaster. Don't expect anything amazing, don't expect to hit targets at 100 yards, but expect it to put a dirty great big smile on your face. It is also extremely popular for modifications and for people that like to tune and tinkle with CO2. I wouldn't go for the wooden option again, I'd stick for the plastic stock. If you're looking for a barbecue gun or something to pop off a few toy soldiers in your back garden, then this is ideal.